What's going on, everybody? I want to welcome you to our SD WAN course. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, I know it's a nerdy way of approaching it, but hey, you know what? That's okay. We'll be doing something a little bit different in this series of videos where we're going to be starting off on the, uh, with it already already working, right? Um, I'm going to kind of give you an overview of what's what so you have a understanding of how things are configured and what they do and that type of stuff. And then we're going to walk step by step through the different scenarios and all the good stuff that makes SD-WAN SD-WAN. Now I've been spending about about a month playing with it, so I'm pretty comfortable with the operations of uh, vManage and vBond and all that type of stuff and how everything works. So we're going to be walking through a bunch of those details and going through all that. So I'm actually really excited about this because I, so as soon as I passed my Palo Alto exam, I immediately started jumping into this stuff. And I've been going kind of gung-ho for about a month. So I'm really looking forward to moving beyond this because at about a month and a half, two months, if you're still dwelling on the same technology, you get a little, it's like, okay, time to move on. In this case here, I've got a lot of things working and I'm gonna be walking you through a lot of the, the scenarios and how everything is set up. So what I do wanna do is I wanna walk you guys through basically what the topology will look like, what the flow is going to be, all that type of stuff so you understand what we're gonna be doing and that type of stuff. So we're gonna cover the topology, help you understand how everything is laid out and that type of stuff. So initially when I was testing this stuff out, I had the intentions of doing a lot of really cool stuff and as I was going through, I realized the version of code that I'm running, I'm, for those of you that are interested, I'm running 18.4. Yes, I know it's a little bit older. Um, I do have the intention of taking that version of code and doing an upgrade to bring me to like 19.3 and then see what that looks like. So I, ha I have not done a code upgrade up to this point. So we'll be taking a look at those details at a point in the future. But right now where we're at is where we're at. So. Um, over here on the right hand side, actually, let me go ahead and pull up my pen tool because at the moment it is not present. And then we will take a look at, I'll white, do some whiteboarding and help you guys understand what's what, where things are laid out, what you can expect to see throughout this series of videos and all that type of stuff. So the first series, uh, the first set of videos is going to be basically uh, the the bring up process where we're going to get basically all of this working initially so we'll have to set up the CA then we'll have to get all of the controller devices online working form the DTLS tunnels between them all that type of stuff get the management interface squared away all that good stuff right we're gonna go through all of that once we get that in play then we'll go to each one of the V edges and we will configure them so that they can all communicate back to the controllers over here so that they can come online, get onboarded, and all that good stuff. Once we have that in place, and we're gonna add MPLS in here, so all the V edges will form a BGB peering with the MPLS router right here. So it's a simulated private WAN in this case here. We'll talk about how that comes into play and those details that go into it. Now once we get that all on play, we'll get them all squared away. We'll take a look at the different ways that you can work with stuff. You'll notice that there's a subnet sitting between the MPLS and the INET router and how you can do cross transport communications and things like that. And then we'll talk about how you get the connectivity up and running for the control and the WAN connectivity and all that good stuff. Then once we have all that squared away, then we're gonna transition into basic operations. So that means we're going to set up the uh, basically get all the internal stuff propagated, right? We're gonna start off with VPN one, which will be allow us to set up some basic communication. We'll take a look at exactly how all that type of stuff works. In the process of doing that, one of the things that we're gonna do is we're going to do the, talk about the different templates that are out there. We'll talk about the feature templates. We'll talk about the device templates that are out there. How do we push them to the devices that are configured and all that type of stuff. Then as we transition from templates, then we'll go ahead and take a look at how do you do um, route propagation? 
how does OMP work, what does OMP use in order to figure out the best way to get from point A to point B, that type of stuff. Once we have all that laid out and we understand how OMP works, then we'll take a look at advertising connected and static routing, and that will be a big deal. Then we'll focus on OSPF, and then we'll talk focus then on BGP. We'll take a look at how all that stuff comes into play. And then we're going to focus on the internal operations. How does a V-Edge really become a V-Edge and what are some of the capabilities? So we'll take a look at setting up DHCP. We'll take a look at VRRP. We'll take a look at um, setting up routing internally with OSPF. We'll take a look at authentication and some other stuff. We'll take a look at BGP traffic engineering with some basic ideas and operations that are be happening. And all of this is going to be taking, taking place uh, without relying on any type of policy. Well, for the most part, there will be a little bit of policy that we'll have to play with for the route uh, manipulation for BGP and stuff like that. But for the most part, we'll be in pretty good shape. And then we'll then take a look at throwing NAT into the process. We'll take a look at throwing NAT in. We'll take a look at failover, high availability, and how you can use different NAT configurations in order to get the, the job done and all that type of stuff. Once we have pretty much all of that done, well then we'll take a look at ACLs and how ACLs can come into play and get things working. And then we'll jump over to QoS. QoS will be one of those things where we can deploy either through the, the local policy or through the centralized policy. And when we do that, this will allow us to propagate it to where we need it to go and get everything up and running the way we need to. Now, one of the key things that's interesting about and this, now remember, I want to preface that this means that we're not doing any real fa anything fancy with Viptel or with SD WAN. We're doing just getting some of the basic operations up and running. What we're doing may not look basic, but and the reality of it is, it's not too terribly complicated. One of the things that SD WAN does out of the gate is it actually goes into a full mesh with all the V edges. So each V edge will automatically form an IPsec VPN with every other V edge in the SD WAN fabric. We'll talk about how that comes into play and all that type of stuff. Once you have all that stuff laid out and you have all of these connections up and running, you can then start to scale them. So then you can look at the hub and spoke options. You can take a look at how you can affect how the traffic is forwarded. We'll take a look at looking at spoke to hub, but no spoke to spoke communication, how we can implement spoke to spoke through the hub, things like that, and uh, go through some of those details. The reality of it is there's a lot of ways that you can manipulate traffic in the SD-WAN fabric. We're gonna be taking a look at a few of them, but we're not gonna look at every one of them. And the reason, why not? Well, not everything I've tested works exactly the way that it's advertised. That could just be on me. But nevertheless, I want to focus on some of the more widely publicized things like the being able to control traffic and be more of the OMP, the control plane aspect of it, and things like that. So that's basically where we're going to start and get everything up and running. We'll do have some testing and stuff like that. So a lot of cool stuff that's going to be going on as we progress through the course and stuff like that. So let me go ahead and just show you some of the behind the scenes stuff that I'll be doing and all that good stuff that goes along with it. Here I have vManage pulled up real quick. Let me go ahead and pull vManage up. I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of the way. I'll go ahead and log in. And then I also have a number of, not now, um, I also have a number of devices inside working and operational as you can see. It's a pretty full routing table in terms of what the connectivity looks like and all the stuff that goes into it. So it's actually pretty cool what you can do. So every once in a while I get some weirdness that populates like this. You have to like literally come in here and resynchronize it. Currently I have five V edges added to my network. I have six control connections up and running. I have full WAN connectivity between four sites. So a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, one of the other ones that we'll look at at some point in the future, I don't know when, will be T-Lock extension, now that I think about it. So this is basically how this, uh, what this looks like when it's all up and running and operational. If we come over here to devices, you can see that devices are working. I've got them 
map to a template so that you, we have communication set up correctly the way we need it to. If I come down here to templates, I have a crap load of templates created as I've been playing around with this, trying to get everything to work the way that I need it to and become operational because once you start getting into the, the nuts and bolts and the, the meat and taters of how it all works, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to be taking a look at in terms of how it works and how to get it operational and things like that. Then we have device templates which actually take a group of feature templates, they bundle them together and then they push them to a particular device or devices in order for it to affect how the device will work. So I have that type of stuff in play. So for example, here I have um, VH3. If I look at VH3, I have, uh, if we do a show run, you can see there's actually a lot going on here. We have some banners going on. We have the transport VPN. Um, we come down here to VPN1. We can see that we've got some, um, some ACLs working and some prefix lists working and stuff like that. So it's actually pretty cool what you can do with it in terms of its operations and its capabilities. So, so it's actually really cool to play around with what it does. If we come down here to, uh, let's say for example, the MPLS only template. Let's go ahead and edit that real quick. If you wanna go ahead and edit anything, you have the ability of editing it right here. I can sit there and take a policy that it's been deployed. I can sit here and remove it if I want to, or I can add another policy for SNMP or add a policy for security. I can add interfaces. There's a lot of really cool stuff that it does, but in this case here, we're gonna be taking a look at a lot of the operational pieces to it, because at the end of the day, whether you're studying for an exam or you're studying because you need to understand SD-WAN better, I've gotten it up and running. I've played around with it quite a bit, and I've, have I taken it, uh, do I know every uh, nook and cranny, nut and bolt? No, I don't, and I'll be honest with you right there. I don't know everything. Um, I'll be showing you a handful of different ways to do stuff and to understand some of the basics to do stuff and walking you through those details. And from there, you'll be able to hopefully take anything that I'm showing you in these videos. And then if you need to manipulate them in some way or some, some fashion or form, you'll be able to do that. But beyond that, for the most part, what we're focusing on here is getting the solution up and running. And then if we need to make some manipulations to the way that the traffic patterns work, or how we can control access to a particular thing via vManage or through the CLI on a Viptela device, we're gonna talk about that. So there will be things we don't cover, and if you guys put a request in there, maybe or maybe not, get it operational and working. But at the end of the day, the goal is to test the features out and get everything, uh, test out what I can and stuff like that. But um, it's been a lot of fun to play with and get up and running. So hopefully all of you will follow along in this video and under help me, you know, help spread the word of this SD-WAN course because at the end of the day, that's the reason I do it is to try to help other people out that might be struggling with it. At first, there was some issues that I ran into it, ran into with it, and it was like, okay, what's going on? So what I'm going to do in this the rest of this video is I'm actually going to show you guys how to take an existing topology, an existing design, and we're actually going to start wiping it. So how do you take an existing deployment and get rid of it? You might say, well, why do you want to get rid of it? Well, number one reason is to properly demonstrate an SD-WAN solution, especially like Viptela, you need to, in my opinion, you need to know it from uh, day one, week one, day one, minute one, all the way through to as far as you can take it, right? So I'm gonna show you how to wipe a device. On I'm gonna wipe all the controllers. I'm going to wipe the the iOS CA, so the, the, the router that's acting as our certificate authority. And I'm also gonna wipe um, the, the ASA here at the HQ. I'm gonna wipe the config in here on the, the switches and bring it basically back to a blank config again without having to shut everything off and uh, stuff like that. But I will, I will have to do some reboots. But the point here is I want to take what's already working what I know is a known good setup and then I can just wipe it and then start it over again and then walk you guys through, okay, this is how you set this up. This is how you set this up. This is how you set that up and go through all those steps. So by the time 
we're done with the, the, the um, basically bringing things online and starting to deploy some internal LAN services and things like that, that we're, you're getting comfortable with the operations. So that's basically what it is that I'm going to be going through and playing with. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about how we get this started. So there's a couple of commands that you would need to know. And we'll start on vEdge1. We'll log in real quick. So if you want to basically reset the, the vEdge device, it's really, really easy to do that. And the, what, what you do is you type in request software reset. And then you hit the enter key. It says, do you want, to, are you sure you want to reset to factory defaults? Yes. It's kind of a, once you've made that decision, there's really no turning back. Right. I wish there was a like type in the password again type deal, but there isn't. So just be cognizant of that. So VH2, same thing, admin and then admin. We're going to go ahead and type in request software reset. Yes. Okay. Do this across the board. And continue that process as process across the board until we're all the way done. And then uh, lastly on VEdge 5. All right, so now we have to go do the, the controllers. So we'll click on the controllers go ahead and log in. We'll type in request, software, and reset. Same with this guy, yes. That's going to reset the vManage. Uh, v vBond will be the exact same way. So we're we'll typing re, uh, log in real quick. Uh, request, software, reset. So by the time I'm done with this, it'll be a blank SD-WAN solution that we'll have to build back up. So request software reset. Okay, now that that's all squared away, yes. I'll leave some of the other devices to, um, I'll play with those, like the DC switch. Let me go ahead and do this real quick. We'll type in um, write erase. And we'll go ahead and reload. That'll take that device down. I'm gonna leave the internet router and the MPLS router in intact because we're not too concerned about that because by default those will be working when you plug them into the internet, plug your Victella devices into the internet. But on switch uh, 16 and 17 respectively, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe them out as well. Go ahead and get rid of that guy because he's not necessary anymore. So it's gonna be enable, write, erase, reload, uh, no. And switch 17, same thing. So enable, uh, write erase, reload, no. Okay, so that's pretty much everything. And then on the ASA, I'll type in uh, clear configure uh, configuration configure all. So it's literally going to reset itself. And then I'm going to go ahead and just reload it. reload there it goes so it's going to go ahead and reboot that so everything else that's configured i'm going to leave it alone because at the most for the most part that's basically where we want to start now now that everything has been reset and i'm showing you this you know in not real time well pretty much real time um when we bring everything back up did i do the ca server i think i did no, the CA server is going to get reset as well. So I'll type in uh, write, erase, because I'll show you guys how to bring up the CA server as well. Because um, we have to take down the, um, we go ahead and reload. Nope. There we go. Okay. So now we've got that done, that, that'll reload as well. It'll take some time for the iOS devices to come back online, but... Um, once all that's good to go, then in the next video, I'm going to walk you guys through what it is that we'll be doing initially. Uh, initially, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with bringing up the controllers. 
We'll talk about why we need a certificate, you know, what the purpose of the certificate authority is for, then how does that process work with the devices, you know, what are the devices that need to talk to each other, why do they need to talk to each other, things like that. So, um, really looking forward to this. I don't know about you guys, but I'm like, I'm kind of geeking here a little bit. Um, not, not a little bit, a lot. So, with that being said, thanks so much for stopping by. If you have any questions, please leave a question, comment in the comment section below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see all of you in the next video.